Morning all, welcome to another Chesterfield 4 Banter Blitz. So let's take our, let's just check the preview, let's take the first challenge today, as I missed. Hi there. Morning all, welcome to another Chesterfield 4 Banter Blitz. Let's mute over there. Uh, I think E4 today. Uh, maybe I'll try something adventurous, B3. <laughs> I have played this before. I, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, I've forgotten what it's called. There is a name to it. Uh, okay. If anyone knows, just tell me in chat to remind me. Uh, there is a, there is a name for this. Uh, <clears throat> all right so uh i'm hoping all right he's blunting that diagonal let's see if i can blast this bishop through that diagonal i think knight a3 to c2 and then d4 later possibly uh Although, although this looks a little bit like uh, not not too ambitious at the moment. Yeah, it's a bit quiet at the moment. I wonder if uh, Queen C two, if I strong point E four here, Queen C two, Rook E one, Bishop F one. Just to create a, a strong point. Now, any B4, there's Knight C4 here with that Queen on B6. I think my long term plan. Ah, let's try and grab this C4 square. Now that A5, yeah, I'm wondering about A4 here to try and grab this C4 square. On takes, Rook takes uh, Bishop E6, say Knight C4. I might have. A target on a5 here all right I'm I'm hoping this is okay right yes I don't think it's too bad for either side yet Yeah, I'm wondering about this now. B takes a5 might be vulnerable. If knight d4, maybe I should just take and leave the bishop on d2. All right, here queen b2 for later, maybe d4. Although that doesn't seem likely. Hmm. What about just taking? And if taking, there's knight takes e5. If taken this way, there's an outside pawn. Outside past pawn. Okay, yeah, d6 is lo locked down uh, for my d4. Okay, so for the moment. Now, bishop g4 could be annoying. Yeah. Bishop g4. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. Bishop g4. This is a little bit passive, actually. This looks passive. Is he going to actually tolerate the knight on c4? Am I tolerating this night? With the pawns and dark squares, I think the corresponding light squares, there's something I can do with the corresponding light squares. Surely there's something I can do with them. 
Uh, maybe F4 is the plan, actually. I think I'm going to try for F4. So how will I do that? I guess he's going in with... All right, I'll, I'll do this. Maybe the idea knight g2 and f4. Ah, this, this really changes things. All right, I'll drop back here. I've got a backward. Uh, <laughs> I got I got some interesting pawns here. Okay, our knight a4 is threatened. Okay, this has really changed significantly the structure. Oh wow, major transformations. Definitely major transformations here. I got potential pass pawn there. I don't think the f4 plan is very effective. Can I try and soften? The king side with this threat. Um, maybe this d file looks good for rook d2 and, and doubling on the d file. c5 looks good for black uh, as a square, but I might be able to challenge that later with knight d3. I'm thinking to double rooks. Okay, I think that's good news. That can small concession on the light squares. Yeah, c5 is good square for black. Can I get the knight around to these light squares? Knight f3. Okay, that should chase that one, I hope. Uh, I suppose there's f5. Maybe knight takes d4, hits uh, e6. All right, okay. Now there is a check here. Uh, maybe king g2 or queen g6. Maybe queen g6 for a moment. Is he really giving up the light square bishop? Is that really the case? Otherwise, Bishop e4 is also uh, a potential concern for black hair. Uh, Bishop e4. Uh, is that is that like f5 or something? f5, there's knight takes e5, exploiting the pinned bishop. All right, so I think knight takes e5 here. That looks as though that's good because, well, rook takes d4 for rook d8. Bishop f2, I don't have to take with the rook, take with the king to hold that, uh, to hold the rooks in place. This looks as though it's fallen apart really over the last few moves for black. I think I can just take with the king here to keep that rook protected while well, the queen's hanging. Okay, I think I'll just take this hitting that rook. All right, thanks for the game, as I missed. Uh, okay, so uh, PHC. Uh, Hi. Um, I think I'll try knight f6 to start off with. If any sensible move. All right, now knight c3 is unusual. Well, not totally unusual, but but this I think I should have a majority of pawns in the center. In theory, I think I might have played this guy before in this. And it's pretty dangerous stuff. What's the way I handle that? <laughs> uh, I've forgotten, and it's only a three minute game, so I don't think I can take that long. I've forgotten how I handled it. Um, maybe, okay, as long as e5 isn't a killer move. Can I just play on the queen side for a moment? H6 it seems almost pointless with that pin pawn. Okay, uh, can I do this just to play? Maybe G takes. As long as I'm not committing to castling, I'm not going to get mated that quickly on H7 if my king's uh, lurking around for a moment. Now here, um, I I I will tempt. 
uh, things for a moment actually uh, as if HG might be a future threat now here uh, b5 is losing a pawn if I castled here he would take and then I have knight h7 yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with this so if he takes okay I've got HG there uh, but then um, well not yet let's just keep that around because he's hitting my queen I was almost tempted for something with HG but I'm not sure that's too clever knight h7 queen takes h7 and knight takes a5 so I was almost tempted for that but no I'd rather him take there all oh, right taking like that well that I get an important tempo surely on the queen and then that's interesting now surely um, for maybe b5 b4 trying to get some sort of attack if he plays knight d6 and e5 I could uh, be feeling a bit uh, of an issue ah but this way uh, I'm happy that the d5 square hasn't been well compromised yet well that that was I mean all d6 dropped uh, yeah um, okay can I use this c file so rook c8 and knight d4 this c file looks pretty tasty with the dark square bishop now so rook c8 knight d4 okay I, I want to keep that dark square bishop for a moment it protects d6 there uh, okay okay uh, let's keep the Queens on actually uh, hitting a2 here all right uh, now actually here it might be better for a5 a4 all right get out of the firing line here uh, it's actually one minute each isn't it protect h6 I think a4 for b3 all right bishop b5 for a4 then Hell on. okay can I oh maybe that was a bad idea okay I'm threatening no, I'm not threatening much it's getting a bit sharp um, I'll pin that knight okay so I was nearly threatening Oh, I could have just taken the knight. What a, what a moron! I, I mean, I'm talking about me, not my opponent. I could have just taken the knight. Uh, okay, I can take the knight here. Second, second bite of the cherry. I may, maybe take this bishop. or we'll take this pawn here. And that looks pretty good. I think this has crashed through. Thanks. Um, when I say more, I'm talking about me. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I'm, not that bad. I'm always talking about me. If I say what a moron, it's me I'm talking about. Yeah, thanks for the game. Okay, uh, well, this though. Now, I usually get positionally murdered. I want to try and avoid too many square concessions against uh, all this though. Um, how can I do that? I can play this gambit at least that didn't have such major structural issues this kind of reverse Smith Mora gambit which I have seen being played in over the board well for club chess especially not for maybe not so much for one day chess but no I think it's uh, a, a interesting approach well for the moment I can rapidly develop my pieces at least is he going for the Siberian trap in reverse
Yeah, I, I'm wondering um, about this bishop h5 to g4. Okay, Siberian trap in reverse almost. Um, so knight d5 might be friend. As f7 is immediately under fire. All right, can I protect f7? I hope. So I think I want to play. Do I want to play bishop g6? Knight d4 might be uh, something as well. Uh, knight d4 with his king in the center. I could add more power to knight d4 with a rook on c8, just in case. What else is uh, going on here? f7, okay, h7. White king still in the center. Knight d4 seems. I don't know, it seems fun here. Is it not? I mean, if he cast, no, he's not. He wasn't going to cast a queenside there anyway. All right, there's bishop f6 threatened, so I'm going to do something about bishop f6 with the h7 pawn, yeah, because bishop and then queen h7. Okay, here there's bishop d3 check. <laughs> and if um, king g1, bishop f2, king f2, knight g4, maybe then there's queen b6 after. That would be interesting to see. Mm, sort of neglecting um, things if it doesn't work out, it's pretty committal. What about just rook e7 for a moment? I'm being a chicken. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, I'm not sure. This, uh, okay, I don't mind that particularly. Um, probably a chicken move, rook e7. I, I don't know exactly. Bishop d3. Uh, can I kick this knight back? I don't like it lurking around on f7 totally. Um, if it was on f3, the check, king g1, knight g4. I'm hoping this knight g4 has something to it. I'm threatening mates. I have bishop d3, queen d3. Um, that bishop's kind of pinned. So I'm threatening mate here with bishop takes f2. In fact, bishop d3, bishop f2. In fact, what does he do about f2? What, what does he do about f2? I'm, I'm not sure myself. What? How is... Um, I just play bishop f2 here to make this check. And mate? Isn't it just mate? I was worried about the knight on g5, and it turned out my symmetrical knight did some damage. Thanks. All this though, sharp game. Uh, Fenderman. <clears throat> Hi there. 
Uh, I'll try actually. I'm um, um, night off, not Sveshnikov. off. Um, Sveshnikov has the D5 structure issue, which I don't really want. Um, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah, I'm just just not so keen on the major structural issue issues uh, all the time uh, necessarily. Uh, okay, so uh, this is more f uh, flexible, but I'm worried about E5 actually. I've got to put the brakes on E5. Knight D7, B5, Bishop B7, Rook C8. There's a classic. There's classic plans here, like knight coming to c4 later. It's important not to get mated in the process of all this, but in theory, okay. Actually, can I put some pressure on e4 immediately with bishop b7 here, just so g5 can be answered with knight e4? I think swapping the b pawn for the center pawn is fine. So now this g4 looks a bit suspect, actually, in a way, uh, as long as I'm not getting mated. Uh, so g5, knight, e4, queen, b4, knight, e4. In fact, there might even be d5. Might be better to play d5, hitting the queen. Queen goes somewhere, d takes. I mean, in fact, d5 here anyway. Uh, if ed, bishop, d5, or ed, maybe. I think I want to play for knight e4. This, uh, I think, is a favourable structure change. Uh, it, I don't want a bishop pointed uh, at my soft spot h7. I want to keep my soft spots, <laughs> soft spots, protected where it's practical to protect them. Okay, so. Here, can I use this default? I probably, if I keep that rook on f7, maybe this one, knight c5. Is there any point to that actually? There might be, um, although, yeah, it might be knight a4 is a point if b3, knight c3, if rook b1. Well, actually, I'm not sure about this. If that situation doesn't seem uh, that clever. F6 is unplayable here at the moment. Well, this rook is pointless there, so I'll go with this for the moment, even though I'm not sure of the great point of it. It's probably better than on A8. So in a way, I'm just, I suppose, improving a piece. All right, here, uh, yeah, takes knight d3. There's more of a point to this to open up this bishop. Knight d3 now, maybe, just to open up uh, this bishop. That pin, pinned knight looks interesting, but I think just intuitively activating this bishop and that pin is enough for the pawn here. So we have a pin knight. We have an active bishop. There's pressure on c3. That might be enough compensation here with the king still in the center. Oh. Oh. Well, maybe knight b2, queen b2, b takes. And then bishop c5 is, is a nice pin yeah on the knight now with the king there it's bonus points time for that rook so two pawns for the knight plus pin knight now i think is a good deal here with the king on d1 so bishop c5 all right there's queen c3 bishop d4 queen c7 and unless I'm mating, I lose my just just lose my queen now, right? Well, that's queen b6 at least, so I'll go with that. 
So queen c3, maybe not the speculative queen sack, but queen b6. Well, I can try and make this work. Queen takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Let's see. I, I um, play something like not bishop b2, there's queen c2. No, I don't think it's working. All right, there's bishop c6 here or c2. We're just taking and then rook d4 for rook d8, actually. The queen's not a great so, um, defensive piece here. I think just rook d8. I think white's attack was a bit on the slow side with these pawn moves. Sometimes it's, um, I remember John Nunn talking about that attacks being too slow and stuff when I was a junior. Uh, he was coaching juniors and um, I was one of them and he sort of mentioned about that sort of stuff. But here, I, actually, I need queen d2, otherwise, I might even be in trouble because he's got two rooks. Okay, bishop d5 check, uh, queen, bishop c4, queen b2 check. I don't want my back row exposed. All right, queen b2 and here. Is there a mate there? Does it matter? Bishop c6. Wait, I mean, it kind of. All right, all right. I'll just take here for a moment. Yeah, then there's queen b2 and queen b5. Okay, try and avoid getting back row mated. I think I'll take that because I don't want h6 because then again the back row mate threat emerges. All right, now here I think it's a mate here with bishop c6 and queen b5 because there's no bishop on e2 now. All right, thanks for the game, gentlemen. Uh, Kaz. Um, Okay, hi. Cause it's Kaz around. All right, might have to go to the next challenge. Um, maybe if Kaz challenges later, okay, that would be cool. All right, the commutator. I'll try Sicilian again, try and keep things fun. I'm not going to play the Berlin. I'm not in a World Chess Championship uh, context. <laughs> Not that I'll ever be in a world championship context. <laughs> All right, but just in theory, even if I was, you know. I mean, if I was, I'd probably play the Berlin. I mean, okay. Anyway, let's get away from that theoretical subject. So, Queen C7, Knight D7, B5. The Sicilian has been a lot of fun, I believe, over the years. Win or lose. Point to note here, b5, has he got taking? Maybe he can do that. I, I'm hoping I don't get totally slaughtered to taking. No, I, I, maybe just queen c6. It's Maybe it's not an entirely big deal here. Um, we've got here that, again, this Sicilian defense mechanism of trying to think out of the bishop. And put pressure on the center after b5 b4 so it's a simultaneous uh action of this a6 b5 plan it's giving the bishop scope across the center uh now a3 yeah is is a time 
loss. But he's punting for a sack on E6, which does seem a concern. I'm wondering about knight C5. On B4, that does weaken C3. Uh, would that actually be played B4? No, I think there's knight takes E4. I'll go with this for the moment, hitting E4. On F3, I probably need something um, against. I, I may maybe B4 and, and taking on E6 is is a concern possibly. All right, here I I'm I'm hoping that Knight E5 is a good tempo. I'll play this with Knight E5 in mind. All right, so Knight E5 for the moment. And we have a situation with a loose rook on a1 and we can work backwards from tactical liabilities to try and make things work based on them and here knight takes knight takes mind you i'm going to end up with loose rook on a8 after bishop takes queen takes check i've got loose rook on a8 so that's interesting There is the curious move, you know. Knight b3 is a very curious move to avoid activating the queen on e4. Knight b3 is a fun move, isn't it? Knight takes, queen takes. Bishop d2 is protecting a1, but actually in that position, I think there's queen takes c2, which weakens d3 for knight d3 check. So knight b3 actually seems in some ways more attractive than knight e4 here yeah i think knight b3 i'm just doing some final checks i think well i hope that is kind of the weakness of the last move the c3 square the literal weakness of the last move as well C3. Hmm. That drags the knight away from C2. So queen C3, bishop D2, queen takes C2. Yeah, this looks like, um, whoa. Okay, I'm going to take that, I think. If knight takes, that does actually protect c3. <laughs> maybe that 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 is good maybe, maybe that was good all right but here i i'm gonna um given i've got bishop c6 now i wonder if i can venture queen c3 queen c2 because queen b5 later there's bishop c6 so i just want to annoy the king in the center potentially i thought he had knight b5 actually now rook c1 there's knight d3 queen b5 there's bishop c6 but i'm threatening knight d3 well i thought i was all right there is knight d3 and queen c4 just to try and Avoid queen b5 issue and it avoids rook c1. So I'm hoping this position is stable enough. It stops queen b5 and rook c1. I wonder if there's also an idea later of bishop e4, queen e4, and the discovered check. But where. Okay, can we just get rid of the queens then? I'm not sure I should mind that. I'm not pieced down, I hope. 
I haven't done a <laughs> let's see one two three I'm not a piece down right am I a pawn down I'm not a pawn down am I okay I think I can take on e2 and bishop a6 if a4 bishop b5 there's that pin so there's a pin here and there's a pin there Okay. I think I can take that because on rook a3, bishop c6, maybe b5, bishop e4. I'm, as long as I'm covering a8, uh, so I'm not losing this rook to something like rook a3. So I'm hoping to cover a8 here. b5, bishop b7. No, maybe b5, bishop e4. B6, I just castle. Okay, I get time to castle now. I've got. A, no, back crow is not totally terminal. Oh, there's knight f3 now. Yeah, I think I might want to um, take off the bishop and then take on e4. I think okay thanks for the game commentator pretty sharp stuff uh, okay uh, Victor Holly hmm. Is is Victor around? Is, is Victor around? Okay, ma ma maybe uh, I'll bought this. Maybe maybe later, Victor. Um, chess or cheese? You can have loads of holes in both, can't you? In chess or cheese? Ah. Uh, Okay. I think cheese goes with wine. Chess doesn't go with wine so much because I tend to play badly uh, with any alcohol uh, when I've tried it in the past. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. So let's see, c3 and maybe uh, c3 is the only thing I can think about at the moment. I don't, I, I don't think the idea of castling is that attractive because, um, oh, okay, can I play c4? That's, that's an interesting way to attack the knight if I have this structure change I can probably use the c file later that's what I'm hoping for now on c6 actually uh, tactically that doesn't seem as though it's losing a piece because that's a check there all right I might be safe here for um, castling here And say King H two on Queen C eight, and I'm hoping to follow with Bishop E three and Rook C one. I I'd one less pin pawn here now. Pressure on C seven immediately. I think I'm threatening to crash through to C seven with Bishop takes and Rook C seven. Okay. Um. Can I take and then d4? I think if I let him get away of that move, feels wrong. Uh, mind you, that pawn's useful. 
as an advanced pawn as well. Ah, oh, this is interesting. What should be the best approach? Uh, I'll I'll take this. Maybe I can just double the pawns. Bishop takes this check. C takes check first. Maybe I just double the pawns. Get so my pawn is not pinned anymore. And then Queen B three hits B six. Maybe simple as that. B five, fair enough. B five. All right. If I want to win that without losing this, um, there's no bishop a four, right? Okay, I'm going to try this. B five is fair enough, though. Possibly knight c three, queen d seven, though. Seems fairly harmless. So what about playing for f4 instead? If I guard this guy and then play for f4. Now this position seems to be mildly interesting. And if I play knight c3 now. What, what happens with this one? Oh, knight c5. Queen C two I think my plan of doubling here looks okay. If I oh I'll take that one. Oh going into D four. Fascinating. I can't play B five bishop B five. Uh Queen D one E takes E takes Knight f4, rook f4, rook e5. Um, that might be dangerous. I mean, queen e5. Um, for g5, like rook f1, g5. Like f5, knight d4. f5, promise of f6. Uh, I don't think knight g5 is doing anything. So I, I think I'll do this one, yeah. Uh, so knight d4, queen d1 with the promise of f6 without allowing. Yeah, for this knight f4 possibility for queen e5. Uh, so that looks safe on my dark squares, basically. Uh, f6 looks threatened. Now, if f6 is a compromise on the light squares, um, let's see. Uh, queen d2, there's knight b3 winning the exchange. All right, he's closed up my position. b5 is possible tactically because of the check. I think that's good. To play then because of the queen b3 check, because otherwise bishop d7 knight d5, he could take on c1 after. Not a big deal with my king on h2, because otherwise there'll be knight e2 check winning the queen. But here I don't think that's a big deal. Any rook c1, queen takes. There's no knight e2 check, so uh, bishop. Oh, that just loses a piece. That's my point here that knight d5 I think was happening after the bishop retreat. All right, thanks for the game, uh, Tinsel Cheese. Always blame the mouse. Um, All right, structurally, I haven't made any major concessions yet. Mm. Would, would he be willing to castle kingside here? It's possible that I might consider h5, but it's clear um, oh, he's delaying. Okay, there was a Karpov game. I remember which when Cop of one is it the Norris or something? Anyway, he played both bishops out like this, created weaknesses. I think I'll try and play it like that. I think this bishop did retreat like that, and he got this other one. And he created some weaknesses, and um, um, 
not such a spectacular style as, as Kasparov, but in a way, you can probably play, try and imitate Karpov sometimes a little bit, potentially. But anyway, I'm just trying to use the idea that he just, with these bishops trying to create weaknesses, just bishops coming out, especially like this. There's some dark square weaknesses. And then what did he do later? That's the interesting thing. What did he do later? I've forgotten actually. Okay. Um, I can play c6 to kick this knight. But my b7 is a concern here. Maybe something like rook a7 is possible. Okay, so I'm going to play rook a7. Can I put the bishop back on a5? If I put the bishop back on a5, or maybe even bishop c7, queen a8. And then bishop a5, bishop c3, and then a4 is weaker. Maybe that's the plan. It's a plan of sorts. So queen a5, queen a8, I mean, bishop a5. With the threats, bishop c3, bishop c3, rook a4. So I'm really questioning this a pawn. With his deep on tied down, uh, f4 doesn't seem entirely scary just yet. All right, can I use c5 here with tempo? So knight d7. When he doubles, I can spring knight c5. D4 is possible, I guess. It stops. Brook b1 though. So in other words, I don't have to worry about doubling rooks for the moment. So maybe this, going back to this idea of bishop c3 now, rook a4, hits the knight on a3 anyway. So there's a tempo there. I've stopped rook b1. Or rather, my opponent stopped rook b1 by playing that. Okay, I'll go in with this. I can pin that knight. That looks juicy. I've already got pressure on c2. In fact, I can take and then queen a2 here. It looks like nasty pressure, but maybe he's fine. Maybe he's fine. That did seem like a resourceful response. I didn't see that, but there's still some pressure here. All right, if I take on D4, Queen D4 threatens mate. If I take um, on F4 instead, maybe just to slow down that sort of battery on G7. D5 might shut in that bishop. That might be handy. On the other hand, Rook A8. For a4 looks as though well, there's always bishop c3. What about taking this c4 pawn? Is that too greedy? Any d5? I don't think it's that scary at the moment. Maybe just c5. Rook c1. Maybe queen b5. Okay, can I just nick this pawn? It 
it isolates the queen's pawn If I play d5, I've got bishop e4 in mind, it locks that bishop. Rook a7, rook b8, maybe. All right, I'll play d5 for a moment. Mm, queen is. Oh, is my queen getting trapped? Oh crikey. Then I just do something super dumb. Okay, free. <laughs> oh crikey. Yeah. <clears throat> For a bit, I'm hoping. I might have had to check there. Oh. E2 looks scary if he took with the queen. Maybe 96 with D4. I'm in trouble. I think I should try and take this knight off if I value my survival prospects. Sorry, sorry. I uh, yeah. <laughs> uh okay. Uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I uh, trust me to trap. I that was I I don't know what to say. <laughs> I got lucky. I mean, it was the time pressure. Otherwise, he'd have finished me off. Yeah, checkmate with queen and knight. I, moral win. Moral win to the opponent. Moral win. Uh okay. I'm embarrassed now. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I thought I was okay before losing the queen. Before playing d5, I think I was doing all right. And I fell asleep there. Basically, I fell asleep after taking on the c4. Yeah. I, I think positionally, trying to shut down the bishop, tactically losing though in the process. <sighs> Moral win to the opponent. All right, where's the bunny? Is okay. I <laughs> the bunny is. <laughs> I should have them out really all the time. <clears throat> oh. 
for me, not not for the opponent here, by the way. I'm talking about for me. When I talk about bunny ears, I'm talking about for me. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So anyway, uh, except for the uncensored radio Trifon, which might occur one day. In which case, yeah, <laughs> all the jokes will be on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm. Uh Oh okay. What about Queen A six? Is that is that something? Is that something? I don't like this isolated Queen's pawn or that blockade square particularly. What I do like about this position is is the fragment here. Maybe I can double on C six. Okay, so let's say Queen D seven, Rook C two, Knight D five. If I double, don't mind Knight E three, F takes that would heal my pawn a little well, support my D pawn a bit, and that wouldn't be that bad, surely. Okay, can I do this? Can I do Rook C two? On the other hand, here tactically A three seems to win the bishop. The bishop hasn't got a reverse gear here. Can I not just play a three? That queen also took away a five. It's like taking away the escape squares of pieces, like as though you're going to checkmate pieces rather than just the opponent's king to take away the uh, escape squares. Uh, so, okay. Can I play knight c five? And maybe G for in Bishop F four here. That would seem fairly logical. Knight C five is with tempo it interrupts the knight being protected. Knight D five G three does it matter about even at this stage um knight E three? Okay, I'll do this now. Oh uh, maybe a better plan instead of G three for Bishop F four, what about just rook A one to A six? Okay, B three it's protected, and this rook B four is dangerous. I think B three is protected. Uh, rook B four maybe Queen A six. Can I um, carry on with the C pawn again with Rook C two and Rook C one? Maybe G three just for my king to have G two. So rook c2, rook c1, g3. All right, if I play g3 here, I'm a bit worry about my back row. If I just park on, can I park on? Can I just put it back there for a moment? <clears throat> so if I double rooks, then oh well, that's one thing. Queen a one surely discourages this rook can swing across there. There's knight e three potentially, but surely actually that was one feature of queen a one. I 
think I would welcome knight e3 as long as I'm not losing the knight on c5. What can I actually can I just take on a uh, hair as queen e5? So, <clears throat> Oh, there's knight d7 there. And then, as long as my back, as long as my rooks are not totally loose, oh, there's queen e4. There's queen a8, and if rook b8, knight takes b8. So I think this is attractive for knight d7, queen e4, queen a8. Right, so I believe ninety seven here is okay, just checking. In fact, on Queen E four, what about just knight takes B six? Just so if Queen takes that's Queen A eight. Alright, I think I'm taking here now. Thanks for the game, Living. Uh, enough. Let's play English opening. Hey, with no, I'm not playing with E3 though. Let's play quick D4 here. That's interesting. I can consider this Bishop G five, Rook D one, Rook C one. I think it's comfortable. Well, I hope it's comfortable. Uh, so Bishop G five, Rook D one. I'm not sure about exchanging off bishops if that's necessary. Rook d1 carries with it the threat of c5 here. b5 c5 b4 uh, oh that's interesting I thought b5 was the plan So Queen F two is threatened. And that's protected. And I think that, oh, that's too dangerous to allow Queen F two. Ninety four I've nearly been cheapoed here. I lose the exchange. If f5 h3, if he wins the exchange, no big deal. I think knight e4, bishop f5, e3. Okay. Uh, I've been kind of cheapoed. I feel I've been cheapoed with this queen b6. But maybe it's not so bad. The dark squares look vulnerable. f5 h3. Yeah, the dark squares look a bit vulnerable. Can I not just play h3 here? Uh, crikey. It's on f2 after. Alright, if I took on e7 here. Uh, Alright, there's c5 first. There's c5 in this position. Takes bishop e7, f takes. Bishop, um, I'll start with c5 just to stop this f2 business. 
maybe h3 is to be considered or bishop e7 so f takes h3 i just wanted to stop queen f2 for a moment um bishop e7 let's have a look at this takes bishop f8 king takes rook d1 h3 takes hg c4 bishop e3 maybe this h3 is better than bishop e7 and reserve bishop e7 for a moment for another day knight f2 knight f2 f f takes hg with bishop e7 in mind it's double pawns there there's bishop e3 dark squares seem compromised Knight f6. Mm. Okay. Bishop e7. I can play bishop c5 first. Maybe. Then take on f8. I might be fun. There's also queen h7 here. So there's some compensation with bishop f8 alone. But could I get away with bishop c5 first? Where would he attack? No, I haven't got bishop c5. I have to take. No, he just takes. Okay. Queen h7 then. Or rook d1. Rook d1. Bishop moves. Alright. I think queen h7. Grab another pawn. All I can. Threatening queen h8. For queen e5. Um, Alright. So get out of the firing line here. Maybe threatening bishop e4. If he plays f3. f4. Knight moves. Where does the knight move? Maybe I just take for rook f1. e3 I just take for rook f1. So I'm threatening, I think, bishop e4. There's bishop, there isn't bishop h3 just yet. Let's say bishop f5. Uh, bishop f5. Maybe there's g4. Bishop g4. Alright, can I? I've, given I've got queen h6, I don't think my queen's getting trapped immediately. So I'll try this. I got f4 with the idea of bishop g6 after knight moves. There's no queen d4 to haunt me on the diagonal if I play f4. Is that f4, knight f7, bishop g6? Okay. Can I play f4? There's knight c6. Um, maybe that's playable to that knight's too central. Oh, knight swinging to d4 is a concern. If I took on c6 here, if he takes queen h8, bishop g8, that's probably not. If b takes. Uh, Okay, the knight swing is d4. Is that a major concern? M maybe it's not. I'll just keep this bishop for a moment. Knight d4, e4. Knight e2, king h2. What about rook d2? Just to try and... Uh, well, e3, knight e2, king f2. Uh, let's try e3. Maybe even e4 actually. Knight e2, king h2, queen c3, queen h4. So knight e2, king h2, queen c3, queen h4. Uh, 
on the fence. King f2 here, queen b2. So let's keep the king over here. Shot the queen. Undermine. As knight f5, queen g5. About rook b1 for rook b7. Queen d1 for bishop e6. What about rook b7 pens e6? Rook b7 is still possible, rook e7. Queen b1 there. Alright, interesting. Centralized for queen d3. G4 for G5. F5, rook E5. G5 looks like a better proposition. Or bishop F5 here. Try and keep my pawns. Queen, what about G5 check? Now there's rook F7. Um. <laughs> Tricky Queen B6. Oh, what a wombat. Now I'm talking about myself. What a wombat. Queen B6. I'm thinking, I'm thinking positionally at the expense of being thinking tactically all the time. I'm thinking Queen B6. My first thought was, well, what about the B5 pool, uh, plan? And I'm not seeing the major tactical. <laughs> I'm, to, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm critiquing myself. Sorry. The major tactics it invokes. Queen b6. With knight g4. I, and knight g4 has to be stopped. Well done. Well done. <laughs> g4. Okay. Anyway. All right. Ah. Uh. I'm, I'm also remembering this. There's a 1972 match game with uh, Fisher winning the exchange against Spassky. Maybe some regard it as Spassky's worst game in the 1972 match. He played like for B5. He ended up losing the exchange. Fisher played a quite a unique queen maneuver. I thought queen G5 or something back to D2, and then he kind of won the exchange. Uh, shortly after B5 was played by Spassky, it was so it was an in English opening. Um, it's a cl classic one example, but maybe you know some of the games maybe weren't entirely great because of the stress of the match. So I'm not I'm not sure they're like role model games. <laughs> Those games in a 1972 match, uh, but um, yeah. Okay, so some of them are brilliant though, but. Yeah, maybe there was one in particular with the English opening losing. Swasky lost the exchange. Also later he allowed Knight takes e7 check as well. He made things even worse shortly after. F4, F5 to try and squish the bishop. That pawn's hanging, right? I can try and win the bishop as well after with g4. Bishop f5, g4. Is he, is he sacking the bishop for knight g4? Queen h4 after. Maybe after knight g4, queen king g3, f5, f3, f4. My king's going to be brought out. This might need to be looked at, this g4. I'm not entirely convinced now. Bishop g4, hg, knight g4. 
King King here, Queen H four. In that position with the Queen there, can I not play Rook E one? I can't play rookie one because of queen f2. Um, let's go back to king g3, hg, knight g4, king g3. Any f5, f4, I can surely counter sack. So I'll go with this. So f5, f3, f4, knight f4. In fact, I might even consider king g4 there. If my king's not getting mated immediately. Can I kick this guy out, basically? So there's either knight f4 or king g4. I'm hoping the king's not getting mated on king g4. There's also king h3 to consider. f4 king h3. Maybe that's okay as well. Let's have a look at this again. f4 king g4. All right. Now the king's got f2. I'm a bit happier. Um rook h1 I can sack on h5. Yeah, I think that's put first option to be created as well as King F two. King F two, Queen B six, King just drops back. There's no knight G three. So I can't consider rook H five here. Or just King F two. So let's see, Queen B six, King F one. That seems plausible. There's always Queen B three after that. So King F two seems plausible. So queen b6, king f1, there's no knight g3. Queen b3 for d6 check, king h8. I think what needs to happen here connect my rooks, maybe something like just bishop d two just to try and connect the rooks, then queen b three, then double the rooks behind the knight, so rook h two rook h one okay, if I take I know it's opening up my opponent's play a bit. I think I've got bishop e3 to queen b6, so I'm going to try taking this. Fe knight takes e4, okay. I like the central knight. So knight g4 is introduced. I 
maybe queen b3 knight g4 king e1 I mean it seems plausible to play king e1 all right the queen's hanging now Uh, thanks for the game, Cobra. Uh, yeah, looks dangerous though. It did look. All right, kill a cat. A Sicilian again. Just, I think it's a fun opening. Uh, yeah. Especially with you guys playing the open Sicilian, not all these sidelines, which are possible. So um, the classic plan, knight d7, b5, bishop b7, again. I want to put the brakes on e5. I want to put the pressure on the center with b5 and bishop b7. But it also has the threat of b4, which is also to do with the e4 pressure. I think it's okay to delay castling here, unless there's no knight b5. Just check that. It's not too devastating. So I want to play bishop b7. And with the threat of b4, I think, with the threat of b4 here, <clears throat> now knight c5 um, seems almost tempting. e5. Say takes takes. I feel a bit exposed with my king in the center, so I'll, I'll castle actually, um, and then play knight c5 if it's still available. I'm, I need to check this out actually. Knight c5 e5 a little bit more as well. Takes 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 takes. What happens there? Let's try this again. Knights. Okay. E e5 might even be played here. Okay. Up. Uh, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, then there's bishop f2 just to all that just to parry. Okay. However, there's d5 here which is often desirable. In this position, Maybe, maybe rookie eight first, but then he plays e five. D five e five is possible anyway. No knight e four, knight e four. He takes. This might be possible. I'll give this a shot. So e5, knight e4, knight e4, d takes. E d. Okay. Okay. There is knight f5. That is a concern. Maybe rook e8. Just give up the dark square bishop. It can be preserved technically, I suppose, with bishop d8, but. What about just giving up the dark square bishop? Okay. Now knight f5, there's bishop f8. That's the thing. That's why I was keen on a bit of preparation. Well, knight e4 here looks looks good. Now haven't I also now potentially got uh, bishop d6 on f4? Potentially. If he plays something like g3, that's kind of weakening the diagonal. 
If he plays rook f1, maybe that runs into e3 at some point. Um, yeah, bishop d6, knight f5, bishop f4. I think bishop d6 is okay to think about. Not here though. I mean, okay, I'll retreat. G3 uh, for bishop g7. G, G3 for bishop g7. I mean, g6, g6. Uh, knight goes somewhere. Is it worth kicking that knight? Maybe it's worth kicking the knight. There's e3 here. Bishop e3, queen c3. Yeah. It opens up the bishop as well, even positionally. It's interesting. Okay, I can take on c3, I think. Front mates. I think I'll keep the queens on. There's also. All right, I was going to say there's rook d8 and rook e3 potentially to distract the rook. This is mates. Thanks for the game, uh, Killer Cat. Okay, Mr. Wonk ish. Okay, hi. <clears throat> I think this might be the last game today. Hope you've enjoyed today. Uh, yeah, I had a lucky escape, major lucky escape in one of them. Well, I could have resigned. Okay. In one of them, for sure. It's a bit cold here today, actually, in London. It's pretty cold, unfortunately. Is that the end of our summer? Yeah, probably. Uh, is Mr. Wonkish available? All right. Um, Alvi. I think this has to be the last game. It's a three minute thanks. That's uh, keeping things in schedule as well. Pretty sharp. Knight B5 to be considered. I think I want to play B4 just positionally. And then Queen A5. Alright. Okay, I don't want my king necessarily slaughtered in the centre. What about Queen A5? Um, maybe my king's not safe. It's possible. I'll take it here. I'd rather lose the exchange than lose my king. D6 looks pretty dangerous. It's 
Knight C5. Okay. Has he got Knight C5 coming? Um, around. This Knight C5, yeah. Oh, Bishop C6. Okay. I'm hoping to threaten Queen B3. It's a bit scary. This position. Maybe for both sides a little bit scary. For both sides. Okay. The good news is I haven't been mated uh, just yet. That's that's pretty good news. Uh, I am. Well, no, I'm not a pawn down either. That's other good news. Actually, oh, I thought his bishop was attacking mine. I'm starting to hallucinate. Oh, cranky. Do I keep this knight on or not? Hasn't got that much scope. Seven. Don't want this king coming up. We'll play it, we'll play it. I am worse. I think I'm worse. Anyway, I, I think I was worse. Anyway, it was tough, tough. Okay, <laughs> all right. Hope you had good, good fun this week. Um, all right, yeah, okay. Uh, see you next week. Yeah, have, have a nice rest of the weekend and see you next week. Thanks very much. Cheers then.